Shall we pray? Our Father, we thank you so much for giving us privilege to understand that after salvation, there remained a very important thing in us that if it is not dealt with, Christian life cannot progress. Making heaven will be made impossible. I am asking that in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, you will use your word to make us to understand this subject. Help us, O oh Lord, to be able to put the phrases right, are able to get the right passages to support all that we are saying to the glory of your holy name. Father, I'm asking that by your spirit, you will quicken every one of us. We ask that anoint my lips, anoint my thought, anoint the hearts and the ears of the hearers, that, Lord, this great subject, an important subject for every believer will be understood by us. And we will desire it. We will pursue it. We will persevere until we are, have been truly be endued with the power from above. Power for cleansing. Power for removal. I'm grateful unto you because you're going to help us. I pray that Jesus Christ, your son, will be exalted in this message. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Sanctification of a believer. In First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. And I'm reading verse 2. First Peter after James, Hebrew James and First Peter. First Peter chapter 1 verse 2 said, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. And all will say, Ezekiel chapter 36 Ezekiel 36. I'm reading from verse 22. Ezekiel 36. And I'm reading from verse 22. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my own holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, meaning I will set my great name apart, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord. Say the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. 
and I will give you an heart of the flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status. And ye shall keep my judgment and do them. Praise ye the Lord. Today, the Lord again has permitted us to talk about sanctification. Many believers, even here, are confused about the subject. But the subject is very clear. The subject, biblically, is clear. Sometimes when I read the argument against, I, I used to be surprised that people can argue against what is clean and clear there. Even in the passages I read, especially this one, he said, I will take you from among the heathen. At that time, they have even left their land. They were in the midst of the heathen. They were together, worshiping idols together. And in God's plan, he said, I will bring you out there. Now, you can see verse, um, uh, verse 24. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and I will bring you into your own land. When he brings them out, he's taking them to the place of salvation, to the place whereby sin will be broken, will be taken away from their life. And that was what verse 25 is saying. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. What, what brought water here? Water simply means the word of God. I will now minister the word to you. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And ye shall be clean. Jesus said, my word that you have heard, ye are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. That's the same thing here. Talking about the word of God. Is the one that is the means, the, the water, God uses to cleanse his people. That verse 25 now, it will clean. From all your filthiness. Remember, the, talking about sinners, people that are not born again, people that are living in sin, walking in sin, the, from their filthiness, every filthy thing they were doing. Not only that, and from all your idol, the things you were worshiping before. Some were worshipping women, some were worshipping idols, some were worshipping so many things here and there. And here the Lord said, I will bring you out. Then cleansing will take place, conversion, conversion. And I will cleanse you from all your idols. I will cleanse you. Then verse 26 now went on to say, a new heart also will I give you. Now you can see the process. This, the process are here. When you are out of the hidden and you are out for God, God cleanses you, takes away idols from you, makes you a Christian. Now it is after that because what Satan did in all in the Garden of Eden is too big. The deposit of Satan in our life remains after you have been cleansed. The root of sin that we inherited from Adam is there even after conversion. Now, you want to remove a tree, go ahead and cut it. Do you mean that, does it mean that that tree can never germinate again? Does it mean that it cannot germinate again? No. That tree can germinate and still become as big tree as anything. And that was happened. Salvation handles the, the sins you committed. But the sin you didn't commit require another thing to handle it, and which is what we are talking about today. It said, A new heart will I give unto you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart. There is something the Bible calls a stony heart in your heart. 
It is called an inbred sin, that the inborn sin, a sin you were born with. That's why you don't teach a child to sin. No. Already he has, he has, a, he has a root of sin embedded in that child at birth. At birth. And is there. So, it, that stony heart, embrace sin, Adamic nature in some other language, I, I call Adamic nature, need to be taken away to enable you, a believer, to be able to pray well, overcome temptations, have power to be able to do some things that you wouldn't have done as a just born again believer. Remember, the, the, what I want to say is still down, but let me say it. When somebody uh, is to be born again, the feeling you have is a feeling of guilt because you have done something wrong against God. You are a sinner. You have sinned against God. Therefore, you are guilty. That's why I think it's Catherine Booth, the wife of William Booth, that said, at salvation, there is feeling of guilt at sanctification there is feeling of want you are not confessing sin to be sanctified if you are confessing sin get the sin settled first before you handle sanctification a person who is looking for sanctification suppose have been born again suppose that that person has come to the point he knows he's not a sinner He's not a sinner. Anytime you say you want to pray for sanctification and you are, you are confessing your sin, handle your sin and get free force. And take your sin to the cross with true confession and determination to turn away. It is when that has been settled and you can say like the, that blind man, once I was blind, now I can what? See. If you cannot say that about sin, you are not ready for sanctification yet. And that's why maybe you are the reason many of us are not sanctified. And that may be the reason. So let me follow here. Sanctification means to make holy by God. It means to make holy to consecrate by the man setting himself apart to separate from sin and the world that is it's a time that a believer after he the, the matter of salvation when you get born again nobody tells you you are sure there's witness within you you are confident I am saved I am a child of God I'm going to heaven uh huh then it is said you are born again. You don't need someone to tell you that you are born again. You don't need someone to tell you. You know that you are born again. You have the experience. You can say it. Even if you don't know the day of the day, but you know what happened after the salvation. Because there was a guilt. You felt guilty on some things. That you are doing. So there will be that separation from sin and the world. And to be set apart is also mean to set apart for a sacred use or divine use. That means of sanctification. That is, the believer that 
is asking God for sanctification. He is coming to God to say, this body I have used it for this. Now I have gathered myself, I, I lay myself upon the altar. It's a pressure. You're pulling out. You are coming out. That affect, and it's a crisis, like, like salvation. It's a crisis. Sanctification is subsequent to salvation, meaning it is it comes up after you have been saved. Sanctification can only be gotten after you have been saved. It is not for sinners. As for sinners, repent and be born again. That your sins may be remitted. That for, that for sinner. But for a believer, is consecrated. We are calling you that that agitation in you, that pride in you, those things that make you, you don't like it. That are disturbing your prayer. Sometimes when you go to pray, you say, this is my heart. This is my heart. That's the problem. God has provided for it. God doesn't want it to be there. Want it to be removed. It's for believers. Sanctification. So, so, sorry. It is an experience for the believer only. The sinner is called upon to repent. The believer is called upon to be sanctified, to consecrate, to lay himself aside for, for the work of God, for the service of the Lord. Sanctification is the act of God to purify the heart of the believer to be holy. Sanctification is the means whereby God removes the root of sin from the, from the Christian, the believer. It the means whereby in your walk with God, in your walking with God, you discover some little, little things. You discover those things. You can't say you is, you, 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 that you have committed an open sin, but there are some things in you. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes you just see a person like this, and one bad, you don't know the person, and one bad thought came to your mind. Has that happened to you before? That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Why should bad thing come to you? As for temptation, it remain forever until you go to heaven. But at the when you are you pray and you are sanctified temptation is outside you but when you are not sanctified you have temptation inside you have temptation outside the Adamic nature in your heart is a temptation already create it look like if your advice is not taken you are not happy you become cold you don't participate. You need sanctification. You know, in the preaching of the pastor, he mentioned somebody that because he's not giving the person preaching. You remember? And the man is not happy. Can you see that? Sanctification. So these are the things that sanctification handled. For every believer. And also, it's guaranteed you to have perfect love for God and love for brethren without anything, iota of evil in it. That's what sanctification brings. Sanctification is very important. A repentant sinner uh, have feelings a sinner, in repentance, sinner have feelings of guilt. 
as sanctification, the believer have feelings of want. Something is lacking in me. Something need to take place in my life. I wish you have. Well, I, I used to read the, the old old books. Uh, so I think one woman, Hannah Smith, wrote a book that said the the good life, the Christian good life, or happy at okay, the Christian happy life. He wrote the book 1888. And uh, I never had anything like that. When she began to break the thing down. She said, a Christ, somebody asked her, an unbeliever, he said, you Christian look gloomy. You look you are carrying something. You are not happy. You are not cheerful. Is that what all the Christianity can give? She said, it's now down on her that that is true. She now went to the Bible to discover what is the Christian way to become happy. And she brought a piece, 12 chapters. Small, 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 right? If you read that book from beginning, by the grace of God, by far, if you go to chapter 3, you would, have been, you would have been sanctified. My brothers and sisters, that's it. Sometimes you don't feel, you are just gloomy. When the inner man, the, 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 that root of Satan, that brings that gloominess, that brings that unhappiness. You know, sometimes you are servants in the house, know that today, mommy, be careful with mommy. Today, mommy, hey, hankali. There's something like that. You have experienced several times. Why is that? God allows that to tell you there's something in your heart. You are born again, yes. You are a child of God, yes. Are you on the way to heaven, yes. But something in you that could be a barrier to you for making heaven. That need sanctification, need removal. Why is it that you will not feel guilty of it because you are not the one who put it there. It's Adam. And so, if that you, you know that you would have been better than this, in prayer you have been better than this, in doing this you have been better than this, but there is no flow. You need sanctification. And not only that, you are falling and rising in crisis. Become more frequent. Normally when you fall, you are guilty. You pray for salvation. You pray to be, you pray to be restored back. You ask God, you confess that sin. You repent of it. You do restitution of that sin. That repentance. But there's what is called what? Sanctification. Can you say sanctification? Say it again. Say it like somebody who, who, who wants to have it. Say it again. Sanctification. Sanctification is something that must, that must be done. That thing that is lacking, you need it. Your mind tells you, your heart tells you, your behavior. You know you will not be able to perform. Anytime the matter of money comes, now we need money like this and we want brethren to contribute. They don't come again. You need to be sanctified. They don't come again. I'm not joking. I mean what I'm saying. Because that you are going to give to your father. You are going to perform doing something to your father and you are feeling bad. Something's wrong with you. Let's accept it. True, true, there's no money. But one of the things that shows that sanctification is far away from us is that the complaint of no money. You know we are going to attend four, four, four conferences. And as a man, you maybe need to attend two or even one. And you prepare for it. 
But every time we program, no money. Now, for five years, I've been doing like that. Have you ever made an effort? Or you just close the chapter? Like one pastor said, me, I will not attend any program in anywhere if the people will not sponsor me to and fro. He's not born again. He's not what? Born again. He's not a child of God. He's not a Christian. He's a highland. Is it that something that's lacking that we're talking about today? Is that something? Because God wants to supply it. And that's why we read 26 in our, in our test. A new heart also will I give you. That your heart that you, you carry from Adam have been contaminated. Have been what? Been contaminated. The arrangement is God is that when you, after you are confessing and repenting from your sin, all committed sins are forgiven and forgotten. But the inherited one is still there. It's still there. Because today we have so many programs, so let me be checking my time quickly. Okay. Praise the Lord. Ezekiel number one cleans from all filthiness. That's number one. On this point, I want to talk about that repentance and salvation will be clearly done. It will be clear because that's the foundation. Because when you are born again, uh, uh, you have a, a holiness have been established in your life. Spirit of God who is, that is holy dwells in your life. So that is the foundation. To get sanctified, this foundation will be clear, clearly made. Now, by my own little observation, these are our children that were born in church from inception, even from Bailey, who will put, will put hand on the bed and be praying for those children. I'm telling you, they are difficult to be saved. Talk less of sanctification. But those ones that come from idol worshippers' house, from somewhere, they will hear the word which they have never heard. And their repentance, in most cases, is genuine. Very, very genuine. So, number one, cleanse from all filthiness, salvation. Verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness. Idolatry is filthiness. Fornication adultery is filthiness. Witchcraft is filthiness. Wickedness is filthiness. And the Lord is saying, come with those filthiness. I will cleanse you. I will purge you. That's salvation. All idols from the Malam. Some of us drunk, um, what do we call it? No, Brukut is a small thing. We drunk, uh, this Allah Rubutu, you are from the north, you know what I'm saying. You go to Malam, he, he, he turn his legs together and write whatever, so you don't know what he's writing and carry water, wash it, wash it, and you drink it. I don't want you to raise up your hand. I Me, mean, I have risen up your hand that I drank before. I look at it again. Don't, but don't, you don't raise up your hand so that they will not know you. You have drunk all these filthy things in your stomach. God is saying, I will cleanse it. If you can come with a sincere heart of repentance, I will cleanse it. I will take it away. I will make you, you clean. Cleanse you from filthiness, idols. At the time I was young, that's the time of Guru. This time I, I think Guru is, is running away. 
when Guru was there, thank God I didn't do did any like that. And young men were there, they go to Malam. In fact, let me tell you, you are running away from Guru, but you're going to uh, prayer houses. They are the same people. They were doing it um, and putting some dust in the fire. And you are inhaling those smoke. You do the same thing. The prayer house you are going. The oil you are drinking there. The water you are drinking. It's the same thing. You are a sinner. You are, you are not a child of God. I believe you are not going there. And I wish you would, if you have been going, I wish you would never go there again. Because it makes you simple and dirty and defiled before God. You are dealing with demons. You are dealing with evil spirit. Dealing with evil spirit. And so God is saying, I will sprinkle clean water upon you of the word of God. And you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Whatever idol. Believe God. Whatever sin you committed, whatever I knew my own was once straight, final. I still remember the experience of that time. That time. Telling you, this, that's why sometimes some people get born again and you ask them to meet you at 3 o'clock and he's coming 5 o'clock. As he's coming, he knows the program started and he's not doing like this. He's doing like this. Hey, and he doesn't have stomach like my own. Something's wrong with that conversion. Not only that he's late, but so sluggish. You don't know that Jesus died for you. If you have experienced the salvation that Jesus gives, it put power in you. It puts strength in you. It gives you grace. Say, so I will sprinkle clean water. Sprinkle clean water. Um, Hebrews chapter 9 Hebrews chapter 9 in the New Testament Hebrews chapter 9 and I'm reading 13 and 14 Hebrews 9 13 and 14 it says for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an haifa, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Are you here? That if in the Old Testament they used animals' blood, they used the ashes of Haifa. If, if you are not a Bible student, you may not know the Haifa. That Haifa is there in the Bible. Go and read your Bible. The ashes of Haifa can sprinkle the sprinkle on human beings and it made them clean. It's saying that how much more. The blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That kind of, you are saved, there's something remaining. In fact, I was smoking ten, uh, ten sticks. Now I smoke two. Nothing has happened. I was drinking until the day, night came when I was a drunkard. And I was a friend of drinking from 1972 to 1975, April. I was a friend of anywhere they say they're drinking, what type of drink. It is when I didn't see. I did, and I, my own, I can't count is that when the night comes and we cannot move around again, that we go back home. When I repented, in the same town, when I repented, among the same people, soldiers like me, they knew something happened. Not only that my wife knows, the people around knew something has happened to this person. When you repent, who knows? I'm asking you, please. Why not doubt your repentance so that you can go and pray well? I was talking to the prayer warriors. I did Monday or Tuesday. I said, 
that when I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, uh, 29 December 1979, uh, because the way others are rolling and growing, I didn't do it. I was doubting what I received. So, to now press on to be sure is the right thing. Is now I know that that rolling on the ground means the man, the, the person is demon. There's demon there. The Holy Ghost of God cannot make you to, to become dirty in the floor like this because you baptize you. No. I know you can fall. True. It can push you down. Yes. But to be rolling without senses. Uh -uh. So I'm saying that when that conversion came, here Paul was comparing the blood of animals, the ashes of animals, yet it cleanses people. Purify them. How much more we in the better covenant? In the time of grace, we that, remember that that animal couldn't wash their sins, it only covered the sins. Remember it was when Jesus died and rose over from, from grave, he went to release them from Abraham's bosom. But we have right access to God after salvation. I'm talking of genuine salvation, please. Because if you don't doubt what you have, and if it's fake, you hold it like that and be putting hours there. Another thing also, salvation can be lost. Sanctification can be lost. Holy Ghost baptism can be lost. The question is that, have you lost that thing? It's possible the first one week it was genuine. The first one month it was genuine. The first three years was genuine. But is it too genuine now? The way you see your life, will you not run back to Calvary? Will you not go back to Calvary where Christ was crucified and plead for mercy? Verse 14 said, How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience purge your conscience those dirty conscience those dirty thought those ill feeling the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleansing from all sin Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our body washed with pure water. Word of God. Word of God. That, you must yield it. Especially if you are backsliding before. Remember I, that to come back, it will take a little bit of effort more than the time you become born again. Because this time around you understand, restitution is involved. The Lord will cleanse us. I say the Lord will cleanse us in the name of Jesus. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. I'm reading verse 2 and 7. Psalm 51, verses 2 and 7. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Wash me through. Iniquity is what you do, you did. It's your action. Iniquity. God has the means of washing you thoroughly from your iniquities. Verse 7. Purge me with his soul, and I shall be clean. Wash me with what? Word of God. Water. And I shall be whiter than snow. 
go have the remedy. Say, go have the remedy. Maybe you are sleeping. Say it again. I'm telling you today, it can be that remedy. He has everything available. He's ready for you. That's why he asked our leader to put this, this there. You have the remedy. Poach me and I shall be clean. You can be clean. I say you can be clean. When I first came to Deepa Life and uh, you know, I, it's from the barrack I went to the Bible school. I was still a real soldier as we were, rough. But not committing sin anyway. But sometimes I would use to all the prayer praying. What's the evidence that these things are working? Until one tiny girl they asked me to go and either talk to her whatever and say she was deceiving us that she's a, a flying person that had become a, a born again and we wanted to be sure to show her that truly truly is not born again when i came he gave me a dirty slap woman gave me a dirty slap <laughs> i'm telling you in that i didn't know what to do i didn't feel bad i didn't feel anything are you getting the point? I even forgot about it until Pastor Kumi called me and said, and was saying, please, oh, sorry, oh, I was sorry that I didn't feel anything. It was, it was after that, no, that's what, that you have been asking, has God done something in your life? <laughs> was done practically. Please, s -s -s seek for that thing that you will be sure is there. Do all you can to be sure you're truly saved. Check up yourself. Zechariah 3. Sorry, 13. Zechariah 13. Zechariah 13 verse 2. Zechariah 13 verse 2 said, And it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of your land. And they shall no more be in remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. Some of you, the dreams you are dreaming when you are unbeliever. See, most you are still dreaming them. Here God said, we'll cut them off. In fact, some of you, remember some of your dreams are from demons. Home. And you, you say you are a believer, you cannot differentiate between the two. And the dreams have been there. I think it was 2013 or 2012 when one of our members was, was, seen, was seen vision. And in that vision, she wanted serious attention. Maybe as the, the way, maybe the way it was given to Sister Linda. So when we are trying to investigate to find out what's happening, the prophecy came to her and said that God says you will, will expose Pastor Paul and for me, I will die. This one physical, there are people here who are evidence to what I'm saying. I came to the town and I told them this is from Satan. Don't bother. And I was going to, I was going to Onisha at that time. And I said, I will go and come back. I'm here. Amen. I, I am what? I am here to show you it's a false prophet. It means that what they say will come back. Let them not, let them not uh, uh, control to affect your mind. They are nothing. Sinners. Which is a wizard. Something that you were doing when you were, uh, when, when you were unbeliever, you were still doing it. You don't bother. Why should you not bother? It's just like maybe you say you were you were born again, but you, you before you were enjoying the presence in the, to be in the presence of women, you are still being in the presence of women. You are not fearing. Something is wrong with you. That salvation you are talking about is a lie. You have salvation, 
that women can carry it away from you and you are in their midst. You're enjoying their presence. Just sit down with them, relax. Just, something's wrong with you. So, let's look for the genuine. And the question I'm asking you before we go to the matter of sanctification, are you born again? Have you been restored fully? Are you sure that your name is the book of life? Some of us, when we come to meet and they put the fire burning, you remember, hey, hey, I didn't do this. Hey, hey. Wake up. Take salvation seriously. Take making heaven seriously. And for you to succeed, now you go to the second point. Now come over, follow me to the second point. The production or producing of the new heart. It's God. That verse 26 in that uh, 30, Ezekiel chapter 36. Verse 26. The sanctification. I'm talking about sanctification now. After that area I have saved. But all that I have saved is about salvation. Now I'm talking. Now that you are sure you are born again. Now that you are alive. You have evidence. You yourself. You are quite. You are spirit telling you. You are a child of God. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's go to the next point. Let's go to the next point. Verse 26. A new heart also will I give you. You need a new heart. Something is lacking. That it's only when you get that new heart. You can have it. Prayer is lacking. It's only when you have that new heart. You can have it. Devotion to God is lacking. It's when only when you have that new heart you can have it. Consistence in doing the work of God is lacking with you until you have the new heart. You will, uh, then, then you can have it. A new heart will I, will I give you? It's God talking. The old heart cannot walk. Cannot carry you far. It's just like you are. You want to travel. And you, are, you have a bad tire. You can't go far. Believer, you have a bad tire. If you are not sanctified. A bad tire can still carry you. You understand? To so somewhere. It will still be movement. It's not so. It should still be going. It's not so. But that bad tire cannot carry to a destination. May not carry to a destination. Depending on the distance. You need a new heart. To be moved forward, you need a new heart. You need a new heart. And it is God who gives the new heart. He is the one that can deposit the new heart in you by the conditions that I'm going to give you. But remember, please, remember that salvation must be sure. At the time of praying for sanctification, you have no doubt about your life. No grudges with anybody. Salvation is deep. Clean. Washed by the blood. Then, God's ready to give you a new heart. A new heart will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. Ah. I thought you have the spirit. Yes. Yes, I have the spirit. The spirit of God that convicted you and get you born again is there. And the spirit. But now, when God removed the new heart, he put his, uh, another spirit. I'm not talking about uh, uh, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's a different story. That's a different story. 
and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. The heart that argumentative. You can't take the word of God simply. You can't take instructions easily. You can't be controlled easily. You can't endure some difficulties. That's, ton that's a stony heart. That's a stony heart. I think it was last uh, Saturday, uh, uh, the state coordinators, pastor talked to us with our wives. You remember? It was tough. He hit us. Hit our women. Hit us. On stubbornness. So, the stony heart has to be taken away. It's, it, you can't do it. It's God. It's God. We take the stony heart away. And I will give you a heart of what? Flesh. That you can be easily controlled. Anybody can send you. You can go around for anyone. I mean, as a Christian. You don't see yourself as anything. Your years doesn't count. Your experience doesn't count. Doesn't count. That's what the Lord is able to do. Jeremiah 24. Jeremiah 24. What God doing? Jeremiah 24, 7. Jeremiah 24, 7 said, And I will give them an heart to know me. You will easily know God. You will easily understand scripture. You will easily understand scripture. <clears throat> I will give them an heart to know me. That I am the Lord. And they shall be my people. And I will be their God. And they shall return unto me with their whole heart. That requirement. God will do it. That's what God is looking for. I want to perfect your work. I want to perfect your life. That's what God is saying. I want to beautify your life. There are some things in you. They need some work. And I'm willing. I am ready. I'm ready. Uh, let me quickly move to Psalm 50, uh, 51. Psalm 51, verse 7. I think we read it. I'll read it again. Verse 7 said, Purge me with his soul. That's your prayer. After now. And I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. I shall be whiter than snow. When Pastor was giving me this message, he said that he discovered not many of our people understand this subject. That's why I went back to kindergarten so that we can understand the subject and pursue it. To put, understand the demarcation of salvation. And then you now know you are crossing over to another experience called sanctification. Purge me with his up, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 11. Ezekiel chapter 11. And verse 19. Ezekiel 11, 19. Ezekiel 11, 19. It said, And I will give them one heart. This one's a problem. 
Why should you be in holiness that they were arguing about what type of soup to cook in the kitchen? How much of the salt will put there? Argument. Even in our home, we argue. And that, that person, when he was passing, and you gave him, we give, you give, whole 5,000, whole 5,000, you, and you didn't tell me. Did he have to tell you before he, 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 he give? He obeyed God? The whole 5,000, if they give you 5,000, you're not going to collect. And you say whole 5,000. If they give you 5,000, you not going to collect. If you collect, why should you not be giving to somebody? And that's why here God is saying, when it happened, he said, I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within you and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give them a heart of what? Flesh. It simply means that if you are not sanctified, you still have the heart of the, heart of the stony heart. The heart, you are not soft yet. You can't be torn here and there. I was telling somebody, I said, our first missionary in Central African Republic, he told me, I said, Olaifa, that the first time he went to Central Africa, after he alighted, he didn't know, he didn't know anybody in the country. He just dropped and looked for one big tree. And that's what he was, he was doing, what? Sleeping under the tree to now secure when he endured if he, when you just put yourself into the world god help do you know what the, the the ambassador of nigeria there discovered him there carried him and even give him job so get to the point of, he was now being paid in dollar <laughs> why he endured sleeping under a tree the lord will help us i said the lord will help us If salvation has been truly been found, then the half purity shall truly be found too. Then it will be, but it is not automatic. You must desire for it, start for it. I mean, it, it, it's a little bit uh, painful when you're going to that experience. It takes more effort. Now, let me explain it if this will work. When Israelites as new converts, they were to cross the Red Sea. Did they do anything to cross the Red Sea? No. God just dried the place and they moved. But when they were going to cross the River Jordan, did they do anything? Yes. Or maybe you are not reading the Bible, so you don't know what I'm saying. Now, at Jordan, Jordan was overflowed. They don't know what is there. Whether they will fall inside. God said, carry the ark and enter into the water. If they didn't do that, nothing would have happened. That's the same thing. That you have to take risks. So let me close so that I don't know. Our time has gone. Woman side, consecration. Woman side, consecration. The believer does the consecration. God does the cleansing. Maybe I'll just let you put it clear. After seeing those elements in your life, that show that truly you are sure you are born again. But you know that it's not all right. It's not perfectly okay. Some things remain. You used to hold some grudges. You sleep overnight, some things your mind. You need to be sanctified. And then you go before God and lay all on the altar. How do you do it? Abraham's case will help us here. God 
And that was the time also he went ahead and was circumcised. And also, sanctification also means circumcision of the heart. He made covenant with God. It seemed that they started the, the thing around 9 o'clock, I don't know. He brought the animals. He killed the animals. He made the altar and put the animal there on the altar. But the vultures were interested in that animals. Who are the vultures? Those evil thought. Those, those that were who were interested. God allowed him to be watching over those animals' flesh to be kept clean until the fire came in the evening. Are you getting the point? This one, sometimes it's not like a salvation, you confess your sin, you turn away from it, you just receive salvation. This one, you must wait. Must believe God is by faith. By taking the word of God as it is. In 1 John chapter 1, First John chapter 1. Verse 6. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. We do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, does what? Cleanse it from all, not only for salvation, from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanse it from all sin. Take it with that. Embrace it. In fact, this one is better experience than talk about. Better experience. Another example. When Moses came down from the mountain and discovered that Israel had sinned, he came and stood outside the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Levi came out and said, Consecrate yourself by killing all your what? Your brothers that are in sin. And they killed them. And they said, Consecrate yourself unto the Lord. Take some little pains. It will take a, a real task. Psalm 42. Psalm 42. You have to desire it. You have to, you, you, you have to love it. You want that clean heart. You want the Adam nature to go. You'll be like Samis. At the heart panted after the water brooks. So panted my soul after the old God. My soul thirsted for God. For the living God. When shall I come and appear before him? My tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? Sometimes you do something, say you say you are a Christian. In the midst of people, say, you say you are a Christian. I believe those people outside, if they are talking among themselves, they are doing something bad. Very, very bad. We are preaching and talking outside. Is Ezekiel and who? Help me tell them. You have to task for it. You, 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 when task, it takes over you completely. You desire it. You want to have it by all means. And you are ready to pay the price to lay all on the altar. Those of you who refuse to, who refuse to do restitution, it's because you have not desired holiness. 
If you desire holiness, there's nothing you cannot do. There's no secret you cannot open up. At the heart panted for water booths. So my heart panted unto God. Not unto a denomination. Not unto a person. Not unto anything. But unto God. Become all in all. Become everything in your life. Totally free from everything. Lost. In prayer. The Lord will give us the grace. I said the Lord will give us the grace. Yeah. This sanctification is possible. You can have it. Can you, can you today make up your mind? Lord, lay the foundation of task after, after sanctification in my heart today. Lay that foundation. Let, let there be task. Let that craving for sanctification come. Until it comes, you can pray right. Until it comes, you can pray right. Let's stand up and let us pray. Stand up and let us pray. And let me hear your voice. You have, I have been talking almost one hour. So if there's nothing you have heard, Are you truly saved? Why are you not thirsting after sanctification? After holy living? Please, brother, if you are sanctified, you will not be careless hearing this message. You will not. Some of the way you are behaving, it the evidence that sanctification is far away from you. God, help me. Help me that the Adamic nature will be taken out of my life. Give me the grace, whatever remains, whatever it takes, Lord. I want to be sanctified. This matter of sanctification caught across the board. We pastors, please, there are many things our members are doing that, and we are reacting to them, shows we are not sanctified. Let us seek for the right thing. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948.
You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe